Right. So if you are building your system, these are the stages you are going to follow. And the, our focus today, we will look at the investigation. So this is simply the stages that you are going to follow in a graphical format. So we start with investigation. This is always number one. We do the investigation. After the investigation, you will simply go to analysis. Analysis, then you go to design. Then the fourth stage is implementation. And you are going to end your stage at support and maintenance. And then if there is a need to redo your work, you go back to investigation. So these stages, you're supposed to remember them or possibly just to know them by heart because sometimes there will be some blank spaces in some of these stages and the examiners will be asking you to fill in what is missing. So software development life cycle, the stages one follows through when building a new system. And these are the stages. In most system development life cycle, there are five stages. Okay. So when you're talking about the system development life cycle, most books they say system analysis and design. System analysis simply means the system development life cycle. And the order that you are going to follow, basically, uh, those are the five stages you are going to follow in building a new system. So our first stage is the reset, planning or investigation. These three names are normally interchanged. You may not find investigation, there will be planning. You may not find planning, there will be reset. So what exactly takes place at the reset, which is the investigation? When you are starting your new system, what exactly is expected of you? What are you supposed to do at this stage? So at this stage mostly, I know you are going to allocate resources and you are going to form the project development team. But the main thing that takes place at research stage is what we call collection of information. When we say collection of information at this stage, uh, for instance, you want to build a system for SPA, which is at by the crossroads here. Uh, what you are going to do is, first of all, you need to investigate the current system they are using. And in doing so, you need to gather the information about this system. And you possibly are going to realize why they want to upgrade to a new system. So the main reason for investigation or planning is basically to collect information about the existing system, which they are currently using. Like in our school, if you don't like the system we are using, I'm sure since you've been using those systems, you would have gathered information and you can give reasons why you would want this system to be replaced. So, at investigation stage, the main purpose of the investigation is to gather information. You gather information about the current system. And mostly the question that they would ask you at, at the first stage is, can you give one thing that takes place at investigation stage? So at the investigation stage there, this is what takes place. 
the gathering of information about the current system. And in gathering the information, which is at stage one, what do you need? Which tools are you going to use to gather the information about the current system? Uh, let's take it, for instance, SPA, they want a new system. How are you going to build the new system? You simply cannot start by building. You will need to find out what is wrong with the existing system. If you gather the information to be able to tell you that this system has problem because of A, B, and C. And in order to conquer those problems, you are going to discover during the gathering of information, that is when you are going to design a proper system which can answer the people's problem or the problem that they are facing in their cooperation there at SPA. So, the tools that you can use during the investigation of the system or the current system they are using. There are so many tools, but I've selected the main tools that are easy to remember during the exam. So information gathering methods. The system analyst, who is the person going to create a new system, the programmer, we call him the system analyst. Uses the following techniques to gather information. There is what we call observation, interviews, questionnaires, and collecting of documents. So these tools, how are you going to use them to come, with, to come up with the new system? One, let's talk about observation. So in observation, this involves the system analyst walking around the organization, watching how employees use the system and how it works with his or her own highest. Observation allows the system analyst to get first hand and biased information. So what we are saying here is that if you claim that the system is not working well, I would come there to observe the way you are working. Possibly you would say that, Mr. William, my computer in the IT lab gives me problem. Then I would come and stand be, beside you to see the problem that you are facing when using that system. This is what we call observation, to observe a person when this person is using the system. From there, I'll be able to see whether this person is simply making mistakes in using the system or truly the system has its own problems. So in information gathering, first-hand information, I'll be able to see the problem with the, the system. So before we can proceed, what do you think are the advantages of observation? apart from getting the first hand information. Anyone? Alex, what do you think is the advantage of using observation as the method of getting or gathering data? Anyone to try? Waza? Advantages of observation when you are gathering the data about the existing system. Okay, see no one wants to try, but you'll be able to try if I give you an assignment. But when you are being observed, looking at a disadvantage, when you are being observed, I think you don't work well. 
your teacher stands by you to see what you are doing. Even the little piece you have is going to disappear. So when you're gathering the information, then someone is standing by your side. It's very difficult to work. So equally, when we are gathering information about the system, you go there and you start watching how these people are, are facing those problems they claim to be facing. I think they are not going to work well. So one of the disadvantages is that when people are being observed, they don't work well. The main advantage of observation is that you get the first hand information, which is unbiased because you are getting it straight from the field and you'll be creating that system. And you've seen through experience that indeed people are experiencing problem. So in order to conquer these problems, this is what I am going to propose. Then going further, These are some of the advantages of observation when you're being observed. And these are some of the disadvantages. Tristy, even at home, when you're being observed by your parents, I think you lose that stamina despite knowing your work. It, does, it simply doesn't look, feel nice to be observed. People work well when, when they're not being observed. But unfortunately, this is one of the methods that we use in gathering information about the current system. If we are proposing to, to create a new system, we can first gather information about the current system by observation. So persons being watched might feel uncomfortable and work in a different way to usual. So they will just pretend because you are there. But when you are not there, possibly they, they feel they experience a lot of problems. Then the advantages is that not expensive to carry out as the employee is not taken away from their workplace. It simply means the one who be creating the system who love to travel and see for himself or herself how the system is troubling the people. So that is the one method you can use to gather information about the current system. Apart from observation, we can use what we call interviews. The interviews where you go to the location or the site where these people are working from. And then face to face, you start asking them, what problems are you facing with the system? Using interviews also has its own advantages and its disadvantages. And one of the things I've experienced through the years when doing interviews is that people, they tell lies just to pretend as if they don't experience it problems or difficulties in using the system. They would want to portray like they are experts and yet the system simply is not good enough. That is one disadvantage that I've experienced during the information gathering process. Especially when I was doing my thesis at the university, you would to go maybe in Mukushi, uh, Kasama there to find out about the, the system they are using with a view of coming up with the, an updated uh, or upgraded system. You'd find that people are telling lies about the current system. And it's very difficult when people are telling lies because you're not really going to tackle the very problem they are facing since they told lies in the beginning. So, Interviews is another method one can use when coming up with a new system. You can gather information using interviews. So those are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using interviews as the method of 
information gathering. Their questions can be explained like that, and then in, there are disadvantages there. I'll be able to put these notes in, in our WhatsApp group. You'll be able to download. Then in, we have questionnaires, and I've seen students before in this school answering from questionnaires where a teacher gives you that, can you just answer these true or false questions? Someone is doing a thesis. That is a questionnaire. It contains the predefined questions. And for your record, questionnaires can be in two types. They are what we call open questionnaires and closed questionnaires. And open questionnaires is where there is a question. After a question, they leave a blank line where you're going to put your answer. It simply means you are not going to be dictated about the answer which is supposed to be put there. But in a closed questionnaire, the answers are already there. They can either be true or false. You simply need to choose one. And that as well as its own advantages and disadvantages. Like in open questionnaire, I have students like since I can ask a question, instead of explaining the question exactly the way I've answered, asked it, they will include Manchester United in the explanation of which man you is not going to help me build a new system. But the beautiful thing about the open questionnaire is that it's going to open my mind to some answer that people are going to give me in line where I didn't think of. So that's one of advantages of open questionnaire. Then closed questionnaire is closed from innovation. You cannot receive new ideas from people because you have dictated what they should put there, either true or false, nothing else. So that's about the questionnaire, see? But there are advantages and disadvantages, obviously, for questionnaires, which you can read, and they have simplified things there. And finally, the last method that you can use is the collection of documents. What it means is that in any organization, after work, they write down something in their books about the challenges they had during working hours. Like in my office there, what I normally do after work, I would document about computers, and that book, I'll put it in the, in the file cabinet there. In case the other day I'm no longer here, I, I go somewhere. The newer person who come there, if he's going to experience problem from those system, he simply have to go through the book that I've left to see what I've written about this type of a system. And that's what we call collection of document. It is another method we can use when gathering information. So, in short, when we are talking about uh, system development life cycle, we are simply talking about uh, the stages one will have to go through before deciding to build uh, a new system. You flow like uh, that. Well, we start with the planning, then you go to analysis, then you go to design, from design, you go to implementation. From implementation, you go to the last stage, which is the support and the maintenance. And our focus today was simply at our first stage of system development life cycle, which is the planning. And it's very important that you no know, sooner you get your notes, you start studying, because this is not a small topic, it takes time for. The moment you're going to finish this topic, maybe school would have opened. So make sure you understand the notes. If there are queries, you can drop your comment in my WhatsApp group. We'll be able to see how we are going to help 
someone. So before I end this meeting, any question? Any questions? Okay. Mwiza, what is system development life cycle? Mwiza, are you there? Sir, I joined the meeting late, so I didn't get the other parts. All right, it's okay. I will, I will put this video, I'm recording, I'll put it on my YouTube, I'll share the link in WhatsApp. You can go through it and see what we've discussed today. Waza, system development life cycle. Okay, I've got a hand there. Mwemba, please try. Yes, Mwemba. Are you able to? Let me just see. Allow you to unmute the mic yourselves. Yes, Mwemba. Kasonde, can you try? Uh, these are stages that must be followed before setting up a system. Wow, excellent. Excellent, that's exactly what he, I explained. Anyone else want to say something? Yes, Mwemba, your hand is up. Try. All right, I is not talking, but actually that's the first stage that we need to understand. If you're going to build up a new system, those are the stages you are going to go through. And understand what takes place at our first stage, which is simply information gathering about the current system. Unless someone has something to say before I can end the meeting now. Where is my memory loss? Is she here? I have not seen her. Michero, she's not here. Then, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Have you understood today's lesson? Yes, I have. Great. Christine, have you understood? Yes, I have. Okay, so if he, people have understood, then have a lovely day and see you next time.